Imagine you're in a high stakes poker game. The tension is thick enough to cut with a knife. Every decision could make or break you. It's not just about money. It's about reputation and thrill, and most importantly, psychological warfare. This is the essence of a zero sum game where your gain equals someone else's loss. Today in the arena of strategy and calculation, we're plunging into the depths of the zero sum game. We'll explore the strategies players use to outmaneuver their opponents, delve into real world historical and courtroom examples that mirror these intense scenarios and unravel key concepts like the Minimax strategy. Prepare for a journey through the high stakes drama of zero sum games, where every decision is a calculated risk and the consequences are monumental. Zero sum games aren't just theoretical concepts. They've played out in some of the most critical moments in history where the stakes were unimaginably high and the outcomes shaped the world we live in today. During World War II, the Allies and the Axis powers were engaged in a deadly zero-sum game. Every victory for one side meant a loss for the other. The stakes couldn't have been higher. The outcome of battles determined the fate of nations and the lives of millions of people. One of the most intense zero-sum games in history was the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. This wasn't just a military conflict. It was a battle for global supremacy. The Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 is a perfect example. The US discovered Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba, just 90 miles from the American mainland. This discovery set off a tense 13-day standoff. Both sides were playing a high-stakes game of chicken, trying to force the other to back down without triggering a nuclear war. President John F. Kennedy and Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev were engaged in a deadly zero-sum game. If the US forced the Soviets to remove their missiles, it would be seen as a win for the US and a loss for the USSR. If the Soviets refused, it could escalate into a nuclear war with devastating consequences for both sides. In the end, both sides managed to avoid catastrophe through a series of secret negotiations. A zero-sum game is a situation in game theory where one participant's gain or loss is exactly balanced by the losses or gains of the other participants. The total pie of benefits is fixed. If one person gets a bigger slice, someone else's slice must shrink. They're all around us, in sports, economics, and even global politics. Let's delve into the fascinating world of zero-sum games and explore the strategies players use to navigate them in zero-sum games, the goal is not just to win, but to outsmart your opponent. Every move you make is a strategic decision aimed at maximizing your gains while minimizing your opponent's gains. Bluffing is one of the most common strategies. Poker, players often bluff, pretending to have a better hand than they actually do. The goal is to make opponents fold, giving up their chance to win the pot. The art of bluffing involves reading your opponents, maintaining a poker face, and making bold moves that can shift the balance in your favor. In the courtroom, lawyers employ strategies akin to those used in games. They might bluff by threatening to bring in damaging evidence that may not even exist, hoping the opposing side will settle out of court. Another key strategy is positioning. In sports like soccer or basketball, players position themselves to anticipate their opponent's moves. By reading the game and positioning themselves strategically, they can intercept passes, block shots, and create scoring opportunities. Positioning is about being in the right place at the right time, ready to seize the advantage when it presents itself. In business, companies often engage in competitive pricing. They lower their prices to attract customers away from their competitors. This strategy can lead to a price war, where the goal is to gain market share at the expense of other companies. Competitive pricing is a zero-sum game where the gains of one company directly result in losses for another. But one of the most fascinating strategies in zero-sum games is the Minimax strategy. Let's take a closer look at this powerful concept. The Minimax strategy is a decision-making tool. It's all about minimizing the maximum possible loss. In other words, players assume their opponents will play optimally and try to minimize their own potential losses. Here's how it works. 
First, players generate a game tree. This tree represents all possible moves and counter moves. Each node in the tree is a possible game state, and the branches are the possible moves. Next, players evaluate the leaf nodes. These are the final outcomes of the game. They assign a value to each leaf node, representing the outcome if the game reaches that state. This value could be a win, loss, or draw. Then, players use the Minimax algorithm to backtrack through the tree. They start from the bottom and work their way up. At each level, they alternate between maximizing and minimizing their potential outcomes. The maximizing player aims to choose the move that leads to the highest possible outcome for them, while the minimizing player aims to choose the move that leads to the lowest possible outcome for their opponent. Finally, players choose the move that leads to the best outcome for them, assuming their opponent will play optimally as well. The Minimax strategy is widely used in board games like chess and checkers, where players need to think several moves ahead. It's a powerful tool for decision-making in competitive situations. In a courtroom, lawyers might use a Minimax a strategy when considering plea deals. They evaluate the best and worst possible outcomes of a trial. By anticipating the prosecution's strongest arguments and evidence, they can minimize the potential damage to their client. The goal is to achieve the least severe punishment possible, given the worst-case scenario. In contrast, the maximum strategy involves maximizing the minimum possible gain. This strategy is about being optimistic and aiming for the best possible outcome. Players focus on ensuring that their worst-case scenario is as good as possible. Both strategies have their place in zero-sum games, and the choice between them depends on the specific situation and the player's risk tolerance. In chess, for example, the minimax strategy is often used because players need to think several moves ahead and anticipate their opponent's responses. In business, however, the maximum strategy might be more appropriate, as companies seek to maximize their profits, even in the worst-case scenario. Understanding these strategies and knowing when to use them is key to success in zero-sum games. In a courtroom, the choice between minimax and maximum strategies can determine the case's outcome. A defense attorney might use a minimax strategy to negotiate a plea bargain, aiming to reduce the potential maximum sentence. On the other hand, a prosecutor might use a maximum strategy to secure conviction with the harshest penalty possible, ensuring that even in the worst case scenario, the defendant faces significant consequences. Whether you're playing a game, making business decisions, navigating a legal battle, or facing life's challenges, the principles of zero-sum games can help you stay ahead of the competition and make smarter choices. For in the end, it is not merely about winning or losing, but about the resilience to adapt, the courage to strategize, and the tenacity to persevere in the face of uncertainty. So forge ahead with confidence, devise a winning strategy for the battle, and bear in mind that if by chance you stumble, we standing next to you at the Nerds Club. Mm. <laughs>